Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time we're talking episode 7 of season 3 of The Legend of Korra called Original Airbenders. And this is an episode where we actually don't get to see a huge amount of Korra. She only pops up very briefly. This is really an episode focusing, uh, appropriately enough, on our various airbender characters. But it's still a really strong episode. Uh, but anyway, uh, one thing that I do like about this episode is that it shows us another side of Tenzin. It really shows him uh, uh, his more flawed side. And we're so used to seeing Tenzin presented as, you know, the wise master, you know, the guy who, who kind of really knows what he's doing. Here, we're, here's one of those situations where, like when he was trying to recruit the airbenders, we see that Tenzin doesn't really know how to handle the situation properly. And it's, you know, he gets advice from Korra, you know, and she tells him, you know, hey, go, Boomy's an organizer, go talk to him, and, you know, basically kind of recruit him. And uh, it's even his Pema, his wife, who really gets Tenzin to see that he's been going about this the wrong way. You know, he and also with Jinora, Tenzin has been very reluctant to see just how far along Jinora has come. And Jinora is... Well, she may or may not be quite ready for to be declared a master, but she's very, very good. And Tenzin really, I don't think, has quite acknowledged just how far she's gone, which is probably sort of what was, leads to some of her resentment in this episode. And uh, then there's the whole thing with uh, him and Boomy. Now, Boomy actually gives Tenzin what is not terrible advice. It's just that the way Tenzin implements it is completely and utterly wrong. And this is really kind of the biggest problem with Tenzin here in this whole season, is that these new airbenders, he, he says to Pema that, that, that these people are, are never gonna, these people are not ready to be air nomads. Well, of course they're not. You have to imagine that not everybody here is here for the airbender culture. I imagine quite a few of them are like, look, I just want to learn how to airbend and then maybe go back to my old life. Or, look, I'm not against learning about being an air the air nomad culture, but I want the choice to embrace that life to be my own. And Tenzin has still not quite got it through his head that he needs to see these guys as people and not as tools to rebuilding the air nation. And I like that Kai, even though he sort of says it as a joke, flat out points out that what Tenzin is doing, especially after he adopts the whole military idea, is that it's really basically the same as what the, was happening when these guys were conscripted by the Earth Queen. And really, you have to think that Tenzin would realize that treating these people like that after what they've been through is a horrible, horrible idea. And I'm honestly a little bit disappointed that this was not more forcefully pointed out to him. You know, if it had really been kind of... Kai had really gotten in his face and pointed out, like, well... How is what you're doing to us now any different than what the Dai Li did to us? Well, Kai would have, wouldn't have exactly been hitting the mark, but it, I think that really would have gotten through Tenzin's head that, you know, maybe he really should have backed down. In fact, it actually might have been better, com it actually might have been better coming from Boomy. Okay, but anyway, uh, again, a little disappointed that the show didn't push it in that direction, but I guess they were trying to keep things a little bit on the light side. Uh, but anyway, we do see, of course, that for all his harsh training, Tenzin does know what he's doing when he comes to teaching airbending. And then by the end of the episode, the rookie airbenders have uh, come quite a long way. So, it's not that Tenzin doesn't know what he's doing when he comes to training newbie airbenders, it's just, uh... Well, Tenzin's got the technical skills... It's the people skills, the people management skills, the skills that Boomy is apparently quite good at, as we see in this episode, that he really needs to work on. And I kind of think that sort of, if you take, were to take sort of Boomy and Jinora as sort of his right-hand men, as it were, then Tenza would be doing everybody a lot of good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's let's, let's kind of talk about Janora since I mentioned her. Again, she's on this sort of kick to get her airbending tattoos, which, given the focus that's been put her on put on her this season, it really wouldn't surprise me if she ends up getting them, uh, 
towards the end of the season after pulling off something really cool like she did last season. And the relationship with Kai is, you know, moving along quite nicely. And it was pretty hilarious to see uh, Tenzin's reaction to one of the air acolytes referred to her as uh, Kai's uh, as Kai's girlfriend. But you know, he, Tenzin's a dad, and uh, dads always seem to to react that way under those sort of circumstances. Uh, not a huge amount to say about the poachers this episode. They were obviously just sort of intended to be one-shot villains. I did like how they... It was a nice touch they gave the lead poacher guy a sky bison cape. I mean, granted, they were really hammering home, these guys are evil, but again, a nice touch. You sort of have to be paying attention to what's going on to really notice that. Uh, let's, let's briefly talk about Boom. We've talked about him as an organizer. But uh, I did really like that uh, conversation he has with Tenzin at the end where he says, you know, even though I was Aang's son, I never really felt like I was part of the Air Nation. And Tenzin says, well, you are now. And it was really nice to see them sort of connect like that. You know, Boomy's, you know, imagine, Boomy's, if I remember correctly, he's the oldest child. He's the only one of Aang and Katara's kids who doesn't have bending. So, you know, he's really spent his whole life cut off from basically things that are literally in the, the nature of everybody else in his family. I'm talking about bending, of course. And now here he's trying, he is taking these steps into, into that world, and Tenzin's not doing such a great job of, uh, of making it easy. But again, by the end of the episode, the brothers have really reconnected, and you get the sense that things are going to be quite a bit better between them and for them from this point on. Now, one thing that um, is interesting and is unique to Boomy, and is pointed out in this episode, is that he can sort of, he can, he like Janora can understand what the spirits say. Now, Boomy says that he gets the gist of things, so I think it's safe to say that he doesn't understand them quite as well as Janora does. But I like how that does show that Boomy, while he might not be, the four things have been on the spiritual level that allowed him to be a bender, he wasn't completely cut off from that sort of aspect of himself either. <clears throat> now, what's really interesting in this episode is, while I was watching it, something occurred to me about what we saw last episode was to hear when, after escaping the city, they're trying to figure out, well, where's the Avatar? And Zaheer's just off meditating, and he just looks up and goes, they're in Zhao Fu, or whatever that city's called. So the question is, how did he know that? Well, look at how Boomy gets, how that spirit goes, gives that message to Boomju, and then Boomju gives it to Boomy. What if, what if Zaheer is like Janora? What if he can communicate with spirits as well? And if he can do that, well, who's to say that maybe the spirits didn't also help him to learn how to be a better airbender? I mean, who knows? If that's the case, then it would certainly explain how he became such a good airbender so quickly. I mean, last time around, we saw him uh, defeat Kaya, one of Aang's own kids. Now, granted, uh, Kaya has probably sparred against her dad and, Boom and uh, <clears throat> Tenzin growing up. But I get the Aang's been gone for about 17 years, and I get the feeling that uh, you know Tenzin and Kaya have not had a good old-fashioned sparring match in a long time. So while well, Kaya probably has some experience in uh, going up against Airbenders, it would be as nothing more than sparring, and has been something that hasn't happened in a long time. So in retrospect, her actually losing to Zaheer is not so surprising. And, uh, yeah, guys, I think that covers everything that I had to say about this episode. And until next time, take care and have a good one. And, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi. Until next time, take care and have a good one.